we spoke about integrity. It's well documented. You spoke about it on a hundred different interviews. You get locked up, 20, 21 years old. You're very young. You're a signed artist at this point. People would give their right arm to get a record deal. You didn't just have a record deal. You had a bidding war at the time. And you get locked up for a crime you didn't commit. So, you know, just kind of glossing over this and, and, and taking the shortest road you possibly can. Can you help my audience who may not know your backstory during that time understand what landed you in jail and how much time you served? In 1998, I was, I was signed to violate the Def Jam. Um, I repeat to Chris Lighty. Um, <clears throat> I had I had just signed my deal in 1998 after having a bidding war, as you said, with pretty much every major label. Um, but prior to that, I had been arrested in 1997 for armed robbery charge of a cab driver. And um, so, you know, just being in the hood, not very educated of the law, you know, not really understanding all of what comes with it. You just thinking you're innocent, you don't go to jail. And um, so I'm going back and forth to these court dates. They just pushing it along because that's what they do. They say, come back in two months. And you're like, all right, this is going to go away. Come back in two months, you know. So I had originally just got arrested just being in front of my building um, for a situation that actually happened with people from the neighborhood. And, you know, and um, the guy said that I was the person who robbed them, which was, was complete false. So, you know, I'm just going back and forth thinking it's going to go away. And and actually, me and the guy had met up a couple of times, and he apologized. He was actually trying to drop the charges, you know, but the system doesn't really allow you to do that. Once you make a, a statement, it's, somebody's it's, arrested. It's you versus the state. It's not you versus exactly. the individual. Exactly. And then they start threatening the individual, saying, if you take away this statement, then we hold you in contempt of court for lying. Gotcha. So they start doing all types of playing all types of dirty game. So um so I'm going back and forth to court right after I get my record deal signed early 1999. Um that's when I end up going to trial. I took it to trial because, you know, there was no evidence. There was actually no evidence of anything other than him saying it, making an original statement, trying to change it. Then they they figured they picked up some other cab driver who had got robbed and made me go through a lineup. And he said that I looked like the person who robbed him, but there was absolutely, there was there was nothing to connect me to any of these crimes other than some person saying I did something. There was no evidence that I was there. There was no anything. And actually, you know, when I look back, I know, I know for sure the second robbery that they said that I actually did, I was in the hit factory. That's that night, all pretty much all night. But just just being ignorant and not paying attention and just thinking you just don't go to jail for shit you just don't do. You know, I didn't go to the stand and saying, yo, we need to go get these videotapes out this, you know, we need to go get all of these things to prove. I didn't that wasn't something that I did. And in, in hindsight, I look back and I'd be like, you know, I should have been way more intentional, way more serious about it because it was a serious situation. So unfortunately, um, in July of, no, in, was it Mar June? In June of 1998, I, I blew trial and was sentenced to seven to 14 years. How old are you at the time? I was 21 years old. 21 years old, signed to a record label. Mm -hmm. You're doing something honest. Did the courts not have any understanding of that at the time? Did, was, was it not people from the record labels who wrote label, uh, letters on your behalf? Was it not people who came and said, look, I don't know what's going on here, but the person I know is a young black man and he's about to do, he is doing something that is positive and he has a big future in front of him. Did none of that mean anything in your case? Um, it really didn't at that point. You know, we went there. <clears throat> the DA was trying to get a name, you know, and I think the fact that I was 
uh, hip hop artist was something that he wanted to have under his belt. He wanted to be the person who locked up a hip hop artist, you know. Wow. So that was that was something he wanted that level of notoriety. So even you know we went to sentencing and was trying to just get even just get it postponed so that you know I could at least finish my project, shoot videos, just do this. They they weren't open to any of those things. You know, wow. and, no, and and mind you, there was no shooting. There was no nothing. Even in the cases, even though I wasn't guilty of them, there was no real harm in any case. You know, so, but that's that. That's how the system plays, and that's and that's one of the things that led to my activism, just being incarcerated. I, for and, that. and I want you to stop there because I don't want to get to that part of your story yet. Okay. Number one, was you ever offered a plea? Um, actually, prior to everything, when the first case happened, they offered me a year. Okay. Yeah, a year in prison for it. But I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm, why would I do a year for a crime I didn't do? Why would I sit in a year of my life for a crime that I never committed? No. The reason I ask you this, you know, you're, you're a public fi figure, um, a lot of notoriety. There's a face attached to your story. But there are millions of other young African-American, black and brown males who are out there. And this is happening every single day. Yeah. Because even if you have been guilty, even if you have been guilty, did I hear you right when you said you were sentenced to seven to 14 years? Was this your first offense or were you a predicate felon before this? I never had any prior offense. So your first time in the system, mm -hmm. you, like most people, believe the system works for us. I know I didn't do this. I know I wasn't there. And the second thing that you just dumped on me, I'm in the studio. Not just any studio, but the hit factory at that. That's a that's a legendary studio in music and entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm a witness. When that gavel hit, what's going through your brain? Like, like what, what do those first few hours look like for you when you like, damn, I, I just blew trial. Like, how do you reconcile that knowing that you're an innocent man and all that you was about to just lose? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a very difficult situation you know uh the, the minutes before the gavel hit and you know you sitting in the courtroom and there's um they're they're, they're asking questions the the um the jurors are sending back charges and they're asking what does these charges mean and what does this mean and and then you know the lawyer pretty much can get a feel of what's going to happen so I remember in that time, the jurors was asking, "What is what is the, what are these you know the stipulations for this kind of crime? What is what is you know what are the criteria for um, armed robbery in the first and armed robbery in the second? What are the differentiations between the two? And and they would read it back to them. And I remember under in my mind realizing that they actually believe you guilty of something. They don't they just don't know exactly what it is yet. But they're yeah. saying you guilty. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.